So as you guys know, Ayaka is getting her rerun banner very shortly in version 3.5. And so in today's video, I want to talk about just that. I want to talk about Ayaka and if she's worth your Primo Gems, how good she is as a character, and if she is still meta and still very strong, given how the meta has changed since she came out with both the release of Dendro and also the sort of shift to more boss enemies and more unfreezable targets, which can greatly change how you play a cryo and freeze carry like Ayaka. And so we're going to cover all of that in this video. And if my mic sounds different, I got a new interface, so let me know if it sounds better or worse, I guess. But with that said, let's get right into it. All right, so starting things off, let's actually talk about Ayaka and how good she is. Now, the way this video is going to work is going to be a bit unique, given the fact that Ayaka is a cryo DPS. Because of that, this means that her best teams are going to typically be freeze teams. And while there are some others, like primarily mono cryo teams, the fact that she's so good in freeze teams makes me have to split this video into two. We're first going to talk about how good she is when freeze works against enemies that can be frozen. And then we'll talk about her strength when enemies can't be frozen against boss enemies in other teams than freeze. Both of these sections are going to be very relevant as if you want to get a DPS character, they're typically going to be someone that requires a lot of investment and that you're going to be using a lot, which means you need to know how good they are in pretty much every situation against all types of enemies as the enemies present in the Spiral Abyss do change very regularly. All right, so starting things off, let's talk about freeze teams. Aika is widely regarded to be the best freeze carry. And while there are some situations where Ganyu can be better, notably if Venti works, generally speaking, I would agree with that as Aika is amazing in freeze teams when they work. In fact, she has a pretty solid normal and charge attack, but what makes her especially good is going to be her elemental burst, which is where the majority of her damage comes from. Her elemental burst is a huge amount of front-loaded burst damage that will just constantly slash the enemies in front of her. This ability works especially well either against enemies that are frozen or against boss enemies that can't be displaced, as sometimes enemies that can get knocked back like these Geo Vishaps that you're seeing can sometimes make you like miss some hits of your burst, but overall, if you can group enemies and freeze them or against boss enemies that don't really get knocked back, then your burst is really powerful. Other than that, there's many reasons that make Ayaka a pretty strong character, but a lot of them do stem from the fact that she can be used in a freeze team. Freeze teams when they work are usually very powerful, and there's many reasons for this and many different characters you can run, but the main reasons why freeze teams are good are the following. First of all, you can run the Blizzard Strayer Artifact set, which is insane. It gives you 15% crowd damage bonus and 40% crit rate, which is the equivalent of 80% crit damage, and that's obviously just an insane amount of stats. Really, really good. You also get the Cryo Resonance when you pair Ayaka with another crowd character, giving you an additional 50% crit rate and when paired with your 5% base crit rate that means that your Ayaka will start at 60% crit rate even with no artifacts. That paired with the crowd damage you gain makes it to where it's very easy to build her as all you need is crit damage and then attack percent and a bit more crit rate and you're good to go. Obviously energy recharge is nice but Ayaka does have access to an amazing free to play weapon that gives you a ton of energy on its effect especially if you refine it. Other reasons why freeze is one of the best reactions in my opinion is that while its damage isn't that high Blizzard Strayer basically comes with it and also you don't take damage damage. When enemies are frozen, they're stuck there, they're not going to move, you can easily combo them, and they won't hit you back. This can make it very comfy and easy to play, and also make it to where you don't really need a healer, or you don't need a powerful one, if anything. On top of that, you can group enemies together with an Anemo support, which you're typically going to be running in that team, to group them all together, freeze them all, and then use your powerful abilities, like Ayaka's Burst, to hit everyone all at once, as they will be frozen. Now, with that said, I don't want to overhype Freeze. While I personally love Freeze, it's very comfy, and it is good, especially with Ayaka, there are certain factors that make it better than others. In fact, while Aika has free-to-play friendly teams, and we'll cover that a bit later in the video, certain characters do give her a pretty big upgrade than the free-to-play option, like someone like Kazua, who will greatly increase your cryo damage through his passive talents. While Sucrose is generally speaking a really good replacement to Kazua, and sometimes even as good, her elemental mastery is pretty much useless in a freeze team as the freeze reaction isn't one that deals damage, whereas Kazua's elemental damage bonus will actually give you more damage. And so because of that, Aika teams, while they can be free to play friendly. And again, we'll cover that later. Having some big upgrades can make the team a lot stronger than without all of those upgrades. Although again, I want to reiterate that they aren't necessary. The strength of this is that she has free to play accessible builds and teams and also a clear upgrade path with Miss Splitter, Kazua, and then Shenha and or Kokomi slash Mona for each of the slots of her team and weapon. This is an advantage if you want to invest in those and you want to pull on those characters or weapon banners, but also a downside in the sense that it does take a lot for her to reach her max potential. Although I do want to make it clear that when you have all of the good upgrades for your Aika and her teams, they can definitely be sort of meta defining in situations where they work, where you can freeze enemies. A good Aika Kazua Shanha team, for example, can definitely be one of the stronger teams to use and definitely a worthwhile one to invest into, especially once again, when freeze works. Overall though, I do really love playing a freeze team for the comfort and the damage that you get, especially with someone like Aika, and I do believe she's worth using in a freeze team. With that said, the Abyss has shifted a lot recently. While I do believe that in the future, especially 
especially with Ayaka's rerun, the meta may change more to help Ayaka in situations where she's better. The state of the Spiral Abyss has been, in the past, a ton of groupable enemies that you can freeze, and now it has shifted more to boss enemies on either one chamber or both chambers. Because of that, those enemies can't be frozen, and Ayaka won't really be ran in a freeze team for that type of content. While a helpful tip that I can give you is to use a freeze team on certain chambers and then get your three stars and then retry change teams for another chamber if, for example, one chamber can be frozen and the other one can't. Generally speaking, against enemies that can't be frozen, Aika's best team will be a mono cryo one. Now, mono cryo teams aren't bad, but they do have a few weaknesses that hold them back. In fact, since you're not freezing enemies or proccing any reactions, really, other than just swirling cryo to buff your team, it does mean that you lose out on not only the convenience of freeze, but also the free 20% crit rate you're gaining from the Blizzard Strayer set. In fact, the Blizzard Strayer set will still be best in slot on your Aika and on your cryo characters, but you'll only gain 20% crit rate from its passive, as well as the 15% crowd damage bonus. So obviously, that's still a really good set. It's just starting at a lower point than Freeze because of that. With that said, Mono Crowd does shine in single target situations against bosses, which is the weakness of Freeze. Freeze is really good everywhere else. And then when Freeze is weak, you can play a Mono Crowd team. So Ayaka can fend for herself and cover her weaknesses with different teams. The one thing I want to say about Mono Crowd, though, is that it does get quite a bit better with Shenha. While I don't think it's dependent on Shenha, like there are Mono Crowd teams that can work even without her. You can run Kaya, Rosaria, Layla, anyone like that. Shenha does buff your crowd character's damage quite significantly because of how her kit works. While I'll cover Shenha again in a separate video, she basically just has really, really good synergy with crowd units and makes mono crowd teams that much better. Because of that, if you have Shenha, I do unironically like mono crowd teams. If you can't run freeze and you're fighting a boss, mono crowd is a perfectly fine and viable Ayaka team that I believe is underrated. If you don't have Shenha, you can still play mono cryo and I would still recommend it for bosses, but do keep in mind that this is a team that depends more on your support character than the other ones that we mentioned. Having Shenha and even Kazuha, as again, someone like Sucrose is worse here, will both significantly increase this team's damage. But if you don't have them, you can run any cryo option and another Anemo option, like even someone like Jean or Sucrose. And that's sort of why historically I've not been the biggest fan of Mono Cryo, because while it does get better with these upgrades, starting at a worse spot than Freeze and not running reactions has always felt weird to me. It's always been like just add a Hydro character. But now that the meta has shifted more towards bosses, and if that's how it's going to be in future Abysses, then Mono Cryo will be the way to go for Ayaka, where she isn't going to be as meta as when Freeze is usable and good, but will still be a viable option. Also, Ayaka's a flex slot in a Hyper Bloom team can also work quite well, and it's something that I wanted to mention here, but a more obscure team that I will cover a bit later in the video in more detail. Because of that, I believe her power level does depend. So should you pull on her? How good is she? That's what I'm going to answer right now. When Freeze is meta and you can use Freeze, her power level depends on the teams you're running and the upgrades you have. While she has free to play teams like this one that you see right here, and it is definitely very viable. You can even use the Animo main character if you don't have Sucrose, and you can get quite a bit of value, as you can see, from just a basic free-to-play friendly team. With that said, your power level will significantly increase with every single upgrade being Shenha, Kazua, and then a Hydro option like Mona or Kokomi, as well as Misplitter, which can make your Aika feel anywhere from pretty decent to really, really strong. Overall, I believe how much you want to invest in Aika and Aika's teams will determine how good she is for you, as when you can freeze enemies, the team will be very convenient and very strong if well invested into. Now, if the enemy can't be frozen, Mono Crowd teams, again, follow a similar path of starting at a worse point because Blizzard Strayer will give you less crit rate, but it can still be good if, once again, you invest into it and have the adequate characters for it. I do personally believe that Mono Cryo is more dependent on these upgrades than Freeze, at least through my personal experience, as you're starting at a lower point. Personally, I really like Ayaka and I've never regretted her, but I am also someone who has the investment bias of having all of these other powerful characters to be used with her. Now, with that said, I do also want to mention her other teams, while I know a lot of people don't really like teams that aren't Freeze or Mono Cryo, and there are many variations of these if you want to play them, you can also use Ayaka either in a reverse melt team, where yes, Shang Ling will partially be carrying, but running Shang Ling, Bennett, and then another Cryo character will pretty much always just make a good team, as you're going to be spamming melt reactions on either your Cryo or Pyro units. Do keep in mind though that because of Ayaka's ICD on her burst, you aren't going to be melting that many hits, but it's okay since you're running, you know, Shenha and another Cryo character to sort of melt for themselves as well. This team isn't as recommended though, and lastly, you can obviously also run Aika as a burst cryo support in teams that need one, and it's not bad, it is viable, but obviously it's not her main playstyle, and not typically what I'm going to recommend, but having that flexibility is something to consider. Last, I wanted to mention that cryo with dendro in general is very underrated. The reason for this is because of the way auras and dendro reactions work, you can basically use cryo on dendro, and then get more reactions from every hydro app you use, get more blooms while also freezing the enemy, and also proccing hyper blooms. You can run a hyper 
fridge team, if you will, consisting of a crowd character, a dendro, an electro, and a hydro, sort of spamming a bunch of different reactions together and somehow working surprisingly well. Because this team can weirdly perform, I actually think it's another strength to pretty much any crowd character, Ayaka included. It's not a meta defining team, but it is one that just works, especially if you can get bonus freezes on enemies. Now, overall, these videos are always a bit hard for me to include the nuance of a character and when they can be used and good, give you my honest thoughts on their power level without like over or under hyping them. Because of that, I do want to reiterate that I believe Ayaka is definitely good enough, especially if you're pulling for her as a main DPS and want to invest into her, as that's typically what you're going to do when it's a main DPS character that you like. In Genshin, I've always believed that meta supports are going to be the most valuable to pull for and not meta DPSs. So characters like Nahida, Kazuha, Yalan, stuff like that. And then the DPS characters should be, you know, strong, but also enjoyable for you as you're going to be spending a lot of time on them. Because of that, I can confidently say that if you enjoy Aika, you should feel free and happy to pull for her as she is a strong unit, especially in Freeze, but also decent in Mono Cryo, especially if you do invest into her and get strong supportive upgrades like Kazuha, Shenha, and a Hydro option, with all of them being optional and her still being fine without them, but obviously each of them will represent a damage increase, and the more you have, the better she will become. I hope I did a good job at explaining that clarity, as that is overall going to be my take on Ayaka's power level and place in the meta. Oh, and also a bonus strength regarding her build is that since the Blizzard Sphere set is now available in the Artifact Strongbox, you can feel free to just get it passively as you're farming for other characters and chucking your bad artifacts into this to build your Ayaka. This is a huge advantage, and one that I wish I had with Shao and his Vermilion set, as it would save me tons of resin. Ayaka also, as I mentioned earlier, has access to a really good free-to-play sword, which is going to be her best in slot 4-star weapon, giving you attack and energy. You also have Mist Splitter as a viable 5-star upgrade, and a ton of other weapons in between, depending on what you have. When you pair that with the fact that she can build a team out of pretty much anything by just pairing the good elements together, and then also having much better teams with upgrades, I believe Ayaka is a character with a lot of pros and cons, but more pros than cons, more good sides, as she is a strong DPS character that I don't want to over or undersell, I want to be careful with that, but I do believe she is a good character that if you enjoy her playstyle and want to use, you should feel comfortable pulling for. Her. So yeah, I don't want to repeat myself, that's it. I really hope this guy was helpful, and I will have more detailed videos, more guides coming soon with the reruns and with Mika's release as well, so stay tuned for that and subscribe if you want to catch them as they come out. With that said, I hope it was helpful, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Aika dash, auto attack, burst! They're dead. They're literally dead. I should have caused us to roll them into it. <laughs> Fuck. Why did my birth? What is happening, dude? I'm just trying to play the game.